Howdy Connection Group leaders, happy Thursday. I hope you're doing well. I'm excited to talk to you. Uh, let me say for starters, thank you. So many of you were so, so sweet to my seniors and so encouraging them on Sunday. So thank you for celebrating with us on that. Um, we get to talk today about 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, but Peter is describing what Joel said was the great and the terrible day of the Lord is really interesting verbiage, right? But when you read to this chapter, you see both the awesomeness and the awfulness. Really, is it's all about perspective, right? And so I am glad we get to talk about this. Don't think I'm going to talk too terribly long, uh, but let's jump in. I love that. Oh well, actually, let me back up. Uh, for sure, student leaders, uh, but really everybody. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they include this in your packets. But there's two videos that are all about waiting that are included, and they're just so stinking both cute and funny. I'll include them in my email just so you can see them. Uh, it's well worth your time. They're both a minute long. You can show them to your class. It'll make everybody giggle, and it actually helps set things up well. So use those if you can. Now, um, Peter once again uses this verbiage that he wants to stir up in us something. And that word stir, it's actually the idea of waking. So I mean, you're, you're asleep right now. I want to wake you up and help you to remember what matters most. I actually want to use the English verbiage of stir, though, just for a different word picture for you. I can't help myself. I'm a good, good Texan. Anytime I think about stirring something to make it taste better, I think about sweet tea. Most of you probably are aware how awesome sweet tea is. If you're not, then let me introduce you. There's really, really good stuff out there, right? But a good glass of sweet tea, some of that sugar collects down at the bottom, and if you stir it, that next taste is just a little bit sweeter. And this is what Peter is saying. Man, I, I'm going to wake you up. I want to help you to remember the goodness of what's coming. Don't, don't lose sight of what matters. And what matters most is Jesus is returning. Let that be your hope. This is how Paul described it. This is our hope. This is what drives us. And let this be your motive for why you are living the way that Christ has, has called us to, not only because of what he's done for us, but also because of what he's going to us. He's going to split that eastern sky, and he's going to come get us out of here. So wake up and remember that and be encouraged. And then he gives us some other pretty interesting word pictures, kind of fun, but I can't help but when I'm reading through this. Some of y'all know that I'm a movie guy, right? How many movies have you seen where there's some scenario where people are running for their lives and they have to dip up under a little gate. Or maybe there's a couple of scenes like this in Lord of the Rings where they're holding back a gate until the very last second and letting as many people to get in just so they can be rescued and be safety. And simultaneously, there are people on the other side of the gate that are desperately wanting in. They're saying, please hold the gate, hold the gate, hold the gate. Please, please, please wait. But there's also people who have already been saved going, close the gate, close the gate, close the gate, close the gate, right? There's a tension there, and this is the tension that we live in as believers. I, and I, I feel this all the time. I look around at the world, and I just, Jesus, would you please come back and get us? Please, please, I'm so ready. And Peter describes here so eloquently that it is the grace of God and his patience that is stalling so that a few more can get saved. We don't know what the number is. All we know is that every day that passes where Jesus hasn't come back, that means there are more souls to be saved. And so we need to be living in this tension, right, of, Lord, I, I am desperately desiring of you to come save me. And I would love for you to do that right now, <laughs> please. But simultaneously also rejoicing at the fact that, Lord, I, I know for a fact there are people that I work with, and people that I go to school with, and people that I'm neighbors with, and family members that don't know you yet. And I'm so grateful that in your grace, you have not chosen to come back yet, because if you haven't, that's one more day, one more opportunity they have to know you. So Jesus, help me to take advantage of this time that you've given me, not just to sit and wait and, and be impatient, but Jesus, help me to use this time to live for you so that more and more people can get inside the gate before it closes so that their rescue can happen. So let's live in that tension. Let's rejoice and be grateful and, and, and truly be stirred up and spurred on to live for Christ. Guys, I love y'all. Can't wait to see you on Sunday. Hope you have an excellent weekend. We'll talk to you later. Bye.